so uh, with your kind permission uh, professor subir and my colleagues yes. and online participants on behalf of bisorodi library network let me start the formal proceedings of our day 2 of five days national level webinar to commemorate the 132nd birth anniversary of padma shri dr s r rangnathan ayar who is supposed to be the father of indian library and Info science and in addition to that every month every now and then bisorodi library network is very keen on its academics to propagate, to exaggerate the academic outputs, particularly publication, thesis, dissertation, any kind of publication, book writing, and many, many, many more things. And I'm happy. Today, uh, we have with us Professor Subir Kumar Rai. We have a long relation. We can say friend. We can say brother and uh, elder brother like that. We are at the dweller of Sam Hostel same subject though i have left the subject uh, after a while i mean three four months i have left the subject if i was continue this subject then i think myself and subir would have been the passenger of same boat in terms of subject so anyway uh, but out of many we are just trying to uh, find out the uniformity and our friendship relation after having 20 years or 25 years later when uh, professor subir by his identity, by his subject, established himself as a legal academician in one way. And I know him that in early life, he was also a practitioner. So he is a combination of legal professionals as well as practitioners. Not only that, my uh, colleague Dr. Sabat Nausin will introduce him formally. I'm a bit nostalgic and I'm a bit, uh, I know, you know, uh, kind of. Uh, emotional to be find my fellow friends on the board when we saw the live network invite him as a resource person so i don't know when i will be able to stop to speak about uh, professor subir brotherly subir of course so uh, he is also soldiering many responsibilities on many university institute college in the field of law not only law but also academic administration as i know that the makura university he was the registrar, and he is also soldiering the responsibility of undergraduate faculty council secretary. Also, he would have been the director of IQAC and heading the department and many more colleagues. He was involved as academician of law. More than that, he has a good public relation and he is a good research guide to excel the legal awareness among the rural communities of Bengal in particular, India in general. And that is why he is supposed to himself figure in the district of Makura, Makura University, which is supposed to be a kind of modern land. And while it is very difficult to teach law in that particular rural area, had it been Delhi, had it been Calcutta, had it been Chennai, Madras, Mumbai, it would have been a bit easier. In every sphere of education, it's very easier to address that kind of uh, readers and learners. But here it is really difficult. But as I found information from different channels, different sources, that he is combating with the challenge very efficiently and congenially. So without losing and taking much more time, because I have many things to speak about uh, my fellow friends. So uh, once I have to stop, it's a very kind of, you know, academic uh, platform, so I have to be limit on my mouth. And let me welcome you all, including our today's resource person, respected Professor Subir Kumar Rai, Professor and Head Department of Law, Makura University, and all the online participants, offline participants, my colleagues from Vishwabharati, library colleagues, academic fraternity, research scholars, and I'm happy that different parts of India, many colleagues have joined. And I found that uh, Dr. Sandeep Kumar Pathok, who was supposed to be our yesterday speaker, he is, in spite of his busy schedule, who is supposed to be the deputy librarian of Indian Institute of uh, Education and Science and Research, that is Aizar Bhopal, he has also joined over here. And yesterday I found that librarian IIT Delhi also joined over here, and many young 
professional colleagues from different backgrounds. And today, Dr. Subir Kumar Rai will focus on a legal discourse on copyright infringement, plagiarism, and paraphrasing. So it's very, very pertinent and relevant. And it's a kind of, you know, ephemeral disease, infectious disease in the field of academic arena. So he's the right person to address on this issue, having legal background. And I'm very keen to listen and learn something from him uh, about uh, that uh, topic. So may I now request and hand over the floor to my colleague, Dr. Sabahat Mausin, to introduce our today's speaker formally. Sabahat, please, time serial. Thank you, sir. Uh, good morning, Welcome, uh, Professor Shubir Kumar Rai. He is uh, working as a professor and has head, head Department of Law and Director, IQSC. He has a demonstrative history of working in the higher education sector and skill in constitutional law, environmental law, transitional justice, human rights, consumer matter, governance, policies, artificial intelligence, as well as public speaking. He has served as Registrar and Secretary of Faculty Council of Postgraduate Studies, Arts and Science, Bakura University. He is the convener of NAC Preparatory Team. He is a member of IQSC. And apart from the above, he was he has acted as SPI of Bakura University, Chairman of Journal Academic Expert Committee, uh, as per the directive of UGC, Principal in Charge of Government Degree College, Gopi Balapur too. Higher Education Department, Government of West Bengal. He is a prophetic writer and has published from Delhi University, National Law School University, Bangalore, National University of Judicial Science, Orlik, National Law University, Assam, Hassanuddin University, Indonesia, Bravagia University, Indonesia, Central West Publishing, Australia, associated with Roltage, Taylor and Francis Group. He has delivered several lectures as a resource person in different national and international seminar of reputed universities and colleges in India. He has successfully guiding the research scholar leading to PhD award, and he has reviewed many articles of reputed journal, including Aging and Society, Cambridge University Press, as well as acted as external examiner of PhD thesis. We welcome you, sir, in this platform of Vishwabhati Library Network, and eager to listen from you. So, okay, thank you. May I, may I proceed? Sure, sir. Yes. Okay, okay. Uh, so, first of all, my heartfelt thanks to the authority of the Vishwabharati and especially my thanks, my regards to my elder brother, uh, Dr. Nimai Chandu Shaha. Uh, all the faculty members, research scholars, and all other academicians who are present uh, in the offline and online platform. Uh, really, it's a matter of immense proud to uh, speak on, on the occasion of the 132nd birth anniversary of Padrashri Dr. Esad Ranganatha Ayyad, my regards, my namaskar, my pranam to Dr. Rishar Ranganatha here. And as already, it was announced that the topic of the day is a legal discourse on copyright infringement, plagiarism, and paraphrasing. So, of course, it's, it's related with the academic arena as well as very much important in context of the library. So, before entering into the topic, uh, let me to inform you all that the matter is very much related with the international business, the intellectual property rights. And we know a number of legislations are here in India concerning the intellectual property rights, like the Trademarks Act, the Patents Act, 
the copyright tax, the design tax, the geographical indication of goods, registration and protection act 1999, the protection of plant varieties and farmers rights act, the Information Technology Act, lots of acts are there. Then naturally the question comes that why we are considering the intellectual components as the intellectual property rights. What's the reason behind that? Now, first of all, we, we know it very well that intellectual property rights, basically it is the consequences of the intellect. It's a product of the cognitive faculty of the human being. And three major components work to accumulate property. And that we know that that is the, first of all, labor, time and of course the the monetary side remains over here whenever we make any property these three components plays a vital role that is the labor time and of course the value remains over here in terms of the cash, kind, whatever may be the value remains over here. So it's very much when we when, when we consider it in terms of any production which happens through the cognitive faculty of a person, the same thing plays over there. The creators who actually creates the different type of intellectual property in terms of the writings, the poem, novel, the matters related with the cinem cinematography, all these things or suppose it, if it relates with the patent, etc. It requires this sort of things over there. That is the money, time, and of course the value remains over there. First of all, let me to enter into the jurisprudential aspect of this intellectual property right. And thereafter, I will come into the matter of the copyright, etc. Basically, when we say about property, now it's very much pertinent to quote Bentham. And Bentham said that property and law were born together and would die together. So that means the Bentham denied that before invent of the legal scenario, before invent of the law, there was no such property. But thereafter, the law, John Locke, he actually didn't support this contention of Bentham. And he said that even before the invention of law, the concept of property was there and the property was basically the, the, the body of the person itself accompanied with the labor. So whenever the people, the, the whole property was actually the free gift of the God. And whenever the people, they associated labor with that very property, then it become their personal property. So from the concept of John Locke, the concept of property, the intellectual property, intellectual dimension of the human being also attract that very concept of property. That is, whenever any 
intellect outcome comes by the application of the cognitive faculty of a human being, it attracts those components of the property. That is, the creators of a property, of course, they associate their labor, their time, and of course, the money, monetary aspect also remains over here. In terms of Bentham too, we know it very well that Bentham actually innovated the hedonistic calcul calculus, that is the concept of pleasure and pain. So the main intention of a legislation is of course to provide much more pleasure than the pain. So whenever the innovators they invent something in terms of literary skill, in terms of the, the uh, scientific skill, or in terms of the spiritual dance, the authors or the originator must get the credit of that and the originator must have the capacity to exploit his or her creation and thereafter to derive some benefit out of that. And that's why the law must try to protect this very skill of the human being so that it should work as an incentive and it will inspire the creators, the innovators, the originator of a work to do something better in future. And in this way, actually, it creates a very congenial environment for the development of research skill, etc., for the advancement of research skill. And in this way, it allows us to satisfy our quest for creating, because we know it very well that human being always is quest for creativity. And this quest is needed to be satisfied. It can't be able, it, it can't be satisfied without if, if a kind of enabling environment will not remain for the advancement of the research, the education, etc. So in this aspect, the intellectual property uh, rights have been uh, actually uh, it, it 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 was uh, ordained by the various laws across the globe. Now, copyright. But before this, we also know it very well that. Uh, before the 16th or the 17th century, uh, more particularly before the advent of the printing machine, etc. The concept of the intellectual property rights was not clear. Basically, this concept came after the Industrial Revolution, we know, after the development of the scientific technologies, etc. Uh, before that, uh, we, you, we, we know that the different sagas, they used to uh, find out the truths of this very uh, society, truth of our own existence, and the relation of the human being with this materialistic world as well as the spiritual world. And thereafter, we know that the various commentators, they used to share those findings of the sagas in Varvat, in Toto, in their own name. And that was at that point of time, it was not considered as an offense because the main 
concept was there that is the sharing of the knowledge, dissemination of knowledge among the people. And that was not considered harmful. Rather, it was considered uh, very much beneficiary to the society. When we say about the copyright, then what is called the copyright thereafter? Again, I will try to come in this very point. Before this, we must know that what is the copyright. Thou salt not still is the basis of the copyright law. No one has the right to... Uh, am, am I audible? May I ask any of the... The spectator, may I audible? Any one of you, please. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so thank you. So, no one is the right to appropriate the labor, the skill, innovations, and capital of others. And the originators of a uh, Literary work, when we are saying about the copyright, naturally it's completely comes under the domain of the literary work, etc. So, and it's 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 not uh, it's far from the patent right. So, the originator of the copyright, they have only the right to exploit their own creativity. So it's, a, it's copyright means the right to copy. And this right to copy is available to the creator or the originator of a piece of literary work. In order to get the commercial, to appropriate the commercial value of that. So copyright is a property right, and of course I told it's intellectual property right, due to its increasing dimensions and volume, it is often described as industrial property. It is considered as negative right, which prevents the copying of physical material, but it never prevents the reproduction of ideas. It is concerned with the reproduction of the form in which ideas are expressed. So whenever the persons they use to appropriate the work of others by their own name, then of course that comes under the purview of the infringement of copyright. But idea, we have to keep in our mind that idea it never comes under the purview of the copyright act, the, the uh, reproduction of ideas, because uh, we can't be able to read the human mind. We, can, we can't be able still now. I don't know whether it will happen in future or not. It's not possible to define the human mind. So it's not possible always to say that whether whether uh, an idea has been taken, derived from someone else or not. So naturally, the copyright it never allows the prevention of reproduction of ideas. But I was telling, this aspect of copyright differs from society to society, from place to place, from countries to countries. I have seen in many of the countries, uh, including the United Kingdom, where the reproduction of anything, verbatim of anything is considered as the violation of copyright. On the other hand, in Central Europe or in India or in uh, China, frequently we will find that the student 
when we were a student, our students, actually what we do. We memorize the whole thing in our minds and thereafter we reproduce that thing in the examination system. And the good students are those students who can reproduce the thing in a beautiful manner. <coughs> if they generally we say that a student is good, if that student can be able to reproduce the whole matches very apt, even if the punctuations, etc., are there over there. Many a times, however, this concept is changing gradually. But this thing is there. We still, we prefer this. Uh, now, in this concept, it's very uh, tough to say whether it is unholy or not whether it is immoral or not, whether this tendency should be incorporated or not, divergent of opinions are there. When I was telling you in the, before the advent of the Industrial Revolution, before the 16th century, the commentators, the scriptors, they used to reproduce the idea of truth of sagas in their own name. And that was not considered as immoral because the main aim was there, the concept was there, the sharing of knowledge among the society. The dissemination of knowledge. But later on, when it was found due to the advent of the printing machine and due to the advent of this, the technology, the development of the science and technology, when it was found that nowadays, we know it very well that with this part of moment, a uh, very uh, uh, knowledge can be shared with a large chunk of people. And it, it can happen with the spur of moment. So after the advent of the printing machine, it the idea came into the mind of the people that why the originator's creation will not be valued properly. And when that value will not be available to the originator themselves. And from this aspect, the concept of copyright came. That is the originator, they will exploit their own creation and they will derive the value out of that for a certain period. Not for indefinite period, but for a, a specific period. So we know that within the copyright, the original literary, dramatic, musical, and artistic works comes. Cinematograph films, sound recording, performing arts, computer programming, all these things comes under the purview of the Copyright Act. Already I mentioned that the original works are given protection to the Copyright Act, but the copyright law is not concerned with the originality of ideas, but with the expression of thought. The, how the thought is being expressed the copyright is totally concerned on this very matter. That how the thought is being expressed and not in the matter of 
the originality of idea. Let me do explain this with some case laws which can make the this lecture more interesting. Uh, in Macmillan and Company versus Cooper Privy Council, in 1924, it was observed that the question is not whether the material used is completely new and have never been used before or before the same purpose. This is not the concern of the Copyright Act that whether the material used is completely new or have never been used because we know it very well that whatever the physiology we used in our day-to-day -day life, whatever the vocabulary we use, that is, of course, invented by someone else. But we use frequently because we believe in the sharing of knowledge, this sharing of this, this sharing of knowledge, this belief system of sharing of knowledge was very much there from the since inception because human being, uh, they become civilized by imitating a child when it comes in this art, imitates the thing. And by imitating the things becomes a responsible citizen of the future. So this is this is very much remains within ourselves. This is this you can say a, a kind of basic instinct. And what basic instinct is there that cannot be denied by any 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 law. Law doesn't come from any kind of utopian society that it will do something which is utopian to people. Law is very much remains in this in this society too. Means means the people among themselves they develop a kind of uh, some some patterns of rule which regulates the behavior. So it doesn't come from any utopian society. So the imit imitating of a thing, it, it it can be said a kind of basic basic instinct of, of a human being. And the task of law is not to refrain the people from, from this, this aspect. So the question is not whether the material use is, used is completely new and have not been used before or before the same purpose. If work is original, if it originates from the creator, emanates from him, and is not copied, but not necessarily novel or ingenious. Once again, I'm saying you that a work is original if it originates from the creator, emanates from him, and is not copied. This, this is simple. This is the requirement of the law. Law never says that whatever is being written or told by the originator, that should be novel or ingenious, that was not being told earlier by anyone, not this. But <clears throat> this is the expression of thought I do. How the thought is being expressed, that is very important one. Original does not mean that work must be the expression of original or inventive. What is the precise amount of knowledge, labor, judgment, or literary skill or quality to get copyright cannot be defined. And it depends upon the situation to situation. We can't say, still we can't define. Again, I am telling you, our knowledge is very limited. Uh, it's just like a drop of water before uh, ocean. This knowledge is 
So what will happen in future, I don't know. But still now, it's very tough to define the dimension of knowledge, dimension of labor, dimension of judgment, dimension of literary skill or quality. But this we can say that how a person is expressing his thought, whether the kind of resemblance is there or not, whether the attitude of copying of that thought or not, this is a very significant point which is being decided by the judiciary. In University of London Press versus University Tutorial Press, the question was raised that whether papers set by examiners comes under the purview of literary work or not, and whether thereby it comes within the gamut of the copyright or not. This was the main question. And the judgment came in affirmative with the observation that test of originality does not depend merely on the quantum of labor or energy spent for the creation. Rather, if it can be shown by the defendant that he relied upon the common stock of knowledge with that of the plaintiff, no action can be taken under law and thus the Chancery Division of England endorsed the doctrine of sweat of the blow. What is the sweat of the blow is this? That is, it's not needed that how much the labor was applied over the year, how much the, how much the energy was spent. If it can be shown that there is a common pool of knowledge, what common pool was used by plaintiff, that common pool was used by defendant too, then the defendant cannot be made liable. Defendant means the person against whom the allegation was brought that he had copied the thing, right? So this cannot be done because whatever, even when I'm when I'm delivering this lecture, I'm using a various common pool of information. It's, it's quite natural one, because without having this common pool of information, we can't be able to, to uh, make a foundation of our uh, deliberations. To make the foundation of our deliberations, it's very much needed to use that very common pool. In G. A. Camp and Sons Limited versus Frank Smithson, it was held that selection of some commonplace tables in a pocket diary did not involve the test of any literary judgment. So we know that we have seen that in the diary, some pages remains over there which shows the different maps, etc. Various informations are being disseminated through those diaries, and it it did not involve the test of any literary judgment. And from this aspect, the modicum of creativity doctrine of USA was endorsed by the court. In Indian Express newspaper Private Limited versus Jagmohan Mundhara and others. This, uh, in, in this case, actually what happened, an article was published concerning the tragic state of flesh state grouped in MP. And later a film was produced which had some resemblance with that article, but court denied to invoke copyright on the ground that there cannot be any copyright in an event which has already occurred. That means the event which has already occurred, there cannot be any copyright over there. Again, I'm saying that different people 
they may judge a thing from their own perception and naturally the outcome will come different one so if the outcomes are exactly same what we used to say if all the words etc are there in 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 a same way means the uh the same verbatim then naturally it will be the infringement of copyright but otherwise it will not be considered as the infringement of copyright in rg anand versus deluxe films and others what happened in this case the plaintiff wrote and produced the play hum hindustan and then after handed the script to the defendant to make a film but after some while that was returned due to inappropriateness of making film on that script but after passing of some time the defendant made a film based on the central idea of that film that is hum hindustan but as i already explained over here that idea cannot be copyrighted so supreme court dismissed this case on the ground that there cannot be the copyright infringement in the matter of the idea in ravens prof versus hard body in this case it was challenged that whether historical work is copyrightable or not it was stated that historical work is not copyrightable but depends on its presentation compilation and inferences in race versus melville this was one another case it was held in this case that if two persons working independently arrived at the same result merely on that ground infringement could not be claimed so this already i told that the people they have the different observation power they have their own perceptions they have their own cognitive faculties they have their own thinking pattern and on the basis of that very perception they judge a thing so naturally two persons if some kind of resemblance remains over there in perceiving a matter to in in judging a thing and if more or less they are same with each other it cannot be said that there is uh, any violation of the copyright in samol ahmed khan versus falguni shah and others this is this case was of the high court of bombay uh what happened in in this uh this 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 was actually a uh, a uh, web series was there a uh, matter was related with a uh, web series and it was held there that in a written work of art such as this story with which we are concerned a germ of an idea is developed into a theme and then into a plot and then final story with the help of characters and settings so any literary work basically it's a combination of uh, these things what happens first of all first of all the idea comes into our mind and from that idea a theme that is met from theme a plot takes place and from that plot 
the final story it goes with the help of the characters and the other uh, things over here. So it's a combination of some elements which give a body to the work or a substance to it. That's why mere uh, reproduction of idea, uh, it doesn't come under the purview of the copyright. But again, the question comes, that what's the difference between the copyright and plagiarism? Is there any difference or not? And nowadays we are we are we are uh, facing a problem of paraphrasing. That is also very important for. But before entering into the concept of the plagiarism, just I want to request the participants, the academicians who are present in the offline and online platform. The other dimensions of the IPR. I told first of all that why the protection, the intellectual property, why it is, it is being treated as a right? Why it is termed as intellectual property? This I told that, of course, it is it is termed as intellectual property so that the originator, the creators, they can exploit their creation. And by exploiting the creation, they can derive the material benefit. They can enjoy their lives. They can gain the uh, prosperity out of the exploitation of their creation. And it works a kind of incentives so that the people, they can be able to create more and more such uh, things, original work. And in this way, the advancement of knowledge, advancement of research, advancement of creation will go on. But whether It is acceptable or whether it is beneficial in all the perspective, it is needed to be uh, researched more in this aspect. That whether it is beneficial in all the aspects or not. Let me to give you one example. that their IPR may not be always look effective for innovation of new technologies and to advance the knowledge-based economy. We all know about the open source system offered by the internet by innovating the software contains a large database. We all know about this open source. Often it means a large, large database is available in the internet and which has little or no IPR protection. But we can deny that it has been proved very effective for dissemination of knowledge and education. Maybe some, some things are there which is not proper, which is not written, uh, by by using the scientific uh, knowledge, not based on scientific study, etc. Of course, that is true. Most some of the things are not there, but we can't say that all the databases which are available over there is not based on this scientific foundation. Rather, I I will say that it proved very effective for dissemination of knowledge and education. Though today, in my topic, the patent is not there, but in this aspect, it's very pertinent to mention 
uh, say in the matter of the drugs, the medicines, the WTO prohibits World Trade Organization. We know it prohibits the access of generic medicines. And that's why worldwide we find that the life-saving drugs are very much costly. It's very hard, really, to access this medicine for the life-saving purposes. And why this, the cost of these medicines are so high, whether it is uh, needed to spend much more money for the research, etc. In reality, it says no. Actually, much of the budget means a lion's share of the budget is invested for advertisement or the promotion of this book. And that's why we will find in the market the availability of lifestyle goods are more than life saving. So these are some of the issues of IPR which really affects the human rights. The questions are there that whether the innovators, the creators, they are really getting the benefit of their fish or not, or some the big companies, the big houses, publications houses in terms of copyright, if we say whether they are deriving the benefits or not, when this is this is a kind of the uh, deliberations and sharing of ideas we are doing with each other, it's needed to think about these matters too. Now, what is plagiarism? Plagiarism basically is a matter of ethics. And copyright is a matter of law. Just we have mentioned over here that idea is not copyrightable. But this is true that sometimes we steal the idea of others. We steal the idea of others and we use that idea as, as if our own idea. And which is, which is, which is really very much unethical. Now, how that can be checked, and I think the plagiarism is a potent weapon to change that very perception. As I told, that plagiarism is a matter of ethics and copyright is a matter of law. Plagiarism is a threat to the stability of knowledge and ethical translation. Ethics infuses both the crime and plagiarism discourse. Copyright, when we say its violation is a threat against an individual. We have to keep in our mind. But this, this we are getting greater. We are, we are giving greater importance to, to the copyright violation. But we have to keep in our mind. And I don't use this. That copyright violation is a threat against an individual. But the plagiarism is a crime against a group of audience and disregard to social relations. Basically, copyright is a violation in between the owner and the product. The relationship in between the owner and the product, that's a violation of this. But plagiarism it's very dangerous. 
as it's not a crime against an individual only. It's a crime against a group of audience and disregard to social relation. Because when ideas will be copied and if there will remain no restriction, then it will very much affect the advancement of research, the progression of knowledge, and the development of the cognitive faculty. It may deprive us from getting the new information, infusement of new knowledge, and that may affect the whole society, corrupt the mind of the whole society, and the whole society may stand still, may come at a step. So plagiarism is use of ideas and expression of idea without acknowledgement. Whereas copyright violation is done for using the materials without obtaining the permission. Plagiarism and violation of copyright affects economies of knowledge, citation system, and market system. To enact a community of thought, it's very much essential to check the act of plagiarism, which may often cannot be possible by applying the regime of copyright as the various windows of it allows the research to proceed by way of fair dealings, first cell doctrine, etc. That means what I already told that copyright it mainly affects the right of the owner over the property what that owner has created. It, it hampers that very right. On the other hand, plagiarism, it affects the very right that is the infusement of new knowledge. So it may paralyze the evolution of thinking pattern. In copyright, we know what I called fair dealings, first cell doctrine, what is that? Now, suppose whenever we criticize the writing of someone, or I am criticizing a film, or making analysis of, of uh, literary development, there, even without the permission of the creator or the originator, I can quote some of the lines. If I'm doing something, some work on Shakespeare or Rabindranath Tagore or somebody else, we can quote some of their their literary work. And that will not attract the purview of the copyright. However, we know that uh, as far the Indian law is concerned, the copyright remains throughout the life of the originator and after 40 years of his death, this copyright remains over there. My my contention is not to enter into that very provision what is there in our act. That is not this. The thing what I am saying, the fair use doctrine, it states that for the sake of any literary work, 
I can quote some of the writings of a person without his permission. And that will not be considered as the infringement of the copyright. But when I'm not acknowledging the contribution of that person, we actually innovated that very thing from where the idea was originated or from where that writing was originated when I'm not acknowledging. That means what? That somehow I'm denying the contribution of a person or I am stealing the contribution of a person in my own name. This is highly unethical, highly immoral one, which is needed to be debarred. Otherwise, the, the academic activity, the literary activities will basically be in danger. Now, when we see citation, that there must be the citation of something. Citation systems deals with the attribution of authors. The relation what exists in between the author and work. So, The citation, when we say that there must have a proper citation in order to avoid plagiarism, this is used in order to establish the relation in between the author and work. And as already I told, that copyright merely deals with the relation in between the owner and the property. So copyright morally bankrupt and economically unjust. But plagiarism, checking is the endorsement of the act of others when it appears useful. Evaluation of the information. So plagiarism is the endorsement of the act of others. That we have to keep in our mind. Section 57 of the Indian Copyright Act allows the authors an exclusive right. It offers the author protection against any unauthorized use of the work, including plagiarism. And paraphrasing what I mean, this is the extension of the plagiarism. The paraphrasing is not the verbatim reproduction of a thing, rather to change the structure of a sentence, change some grammatical uh, system over there, more appropriately, the synthesis, etc., and thereafter to Take that as it's as as their own work. And nowadays we are passing through the artificial intelligence and and uh, I don't know whether we are considering it or not. I do term it as a Pandora box. We are trying to open that very Pandora box, which may extinct our own existence. I often used to say in the matter of the artificial intelligence, because uh, uh, I know the maybe the some of the participants from the science background that present over here. Everyone has the liberty to differ with anyone. But what I believe, 
that basically the artificial intelligence it develops from the algorithms and to make the algorithms it's not needed that the person concerned should be scientists or the engineers rather technocrats they make the algorithms and while they make the algorithms many a times it was found that the wrong use of science and technology remains so clear often a kind of discriminatory the, the always the notion remains to create a kind of uh, discrimination among the society or some notion remains among a section of the people to give a perception that perhaps the human mind in near future is not required rather the everything will be done through the artificial intelligence and many things we are finding of course which which is very much beneficial for human being this is true that we cannot be able to restrain the development of science and technology we should not all we should not do that too that that is that is very correct that we should not try to create any hurdles impediments into the way of the development of science and technology this is true it has its spontaneous development but we have to keep in our mind that at the same time we should not open the pandora box so that our own existence will come into end our literary skill to come into end this this we should not invite this sort of situation uh in just as say say an example uh, that nobody can be able to beat the human mind uh just this is a it's a little example uh take it as example uh Roger Penrose, his prologue in his famous book, The Empire's New Mind, concerning computers, minds, and the laws of physics. What happened is very interesting. And I quoted this in one of my articles uh, in on AI. Uh, that is, in an inauguration program, of a supercomputer uh, that could resolve any complex problem within the fraction of a nanosecond the audience they were asked to put the first question before the computer scientists mathematicians engineers political personalities bureaucrats and the creator of the supercomputer were present in the audience the audience were asked that who can put the first question before this supercomputer they were invited to ask the question but everyone among the audience started to look at one another in dismay because no one wanted to look foolish and to expose his or her ignorance by putting a question before a machine endowed with superpowers then suddenly a child came forward to put a question everybody smiled at the innocence of the child but then the child asked how does it feel to be a computer he asked the question the child asked the question to that supercomputer 
how does it feel to be a computer? The lights of the computer started to blink, to respond. But finally, after more than one hour, the answer that flashed on the screen was, I don't know. We know the famous debate in between Jack Ma and the Musk. In his debate, Jack Ma said that man cannot create even a mosquito. Let alone a man. Means Jack Ma said that we should not worry about machines. Man cannot create even a mosquito, let alone a man. A computer is only that, a computer with a chip. On the other hand, a man is a heart. From where comes wisdom? So ultimately, human beings will win. Why I told? I told this thing in respect to the paraphrase. Or now the development of the technology. That is to write the essay to write the different articles by applying the AI that is bound to be defeated because still, as I told, that human mind, human wisdom, the conscience, has still no technology is developed to define this. And what we can't define that we cannot, surely we cannot put within the gamut of the artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence means we can keep all those things which we can define them. Our first hand feeling, our expression, the dictation of conscience, the different dimensions of mind, the feelings, that cannot be defined, still is not defined. So, certainly we will think of the laws which can check the plagiarism, the paraphrasing, and the infringement of copyright. We have the Copyright Act which allows the author an exclusive right. It offers the author protection against any unauthorized use of his work, including plagiarism. Section 63 of the Act considers copyright infringement as a criminal offense and the punishment may invite the imprisonment. And Above all, we know that promotion of academic integrity and prevention of plagiarism in the higher education institution regulations 2013 was framed by UGC. And we know that the different quantum of uh, the permission dependent, dependable upon the quantum of the copying is there. So, this is all. Thanks for all of your questions hearing. Thank you. And if you have any question, you may ask. Yes. Uh, video done. Bro. Okay. So, thank you, Professor Subir, for your uh, extensive, elaborative, and thought provoking uh, lecture on the topic. And uh, I think, I don't know, many participants will be agreed with me that as far as the apparent view of the topic is concerned, that a legal discourse on copyright infringement, plagiarism, and paraphrasing, what you have presented, to me it is really thought-provoking and based on your academic and administrative and professional experience, you have presented the matter in a different way when 
we may not found that it's so much of tight of different sex sense and uh, like a legal practitioner or law background people is saying so not like that instead of that it was so you know interesting elaborative and i don't think any monotony during this 65 minutes lecture and it's really indicative and before making it open to the audience for question answering let me seek your permission since you are the uh, legal people uh, in generally whatever we are doing and i think you will believe with me and agree with me that since it's a peak academic hour 11:30 to 1 like that so many of the intending audience in spite of their several illness they are not able to join online and physically so what we practice is that soon after the lecture is over to make it available to the wider audience we will make it upload in our youtube channel so that worldwide audience will be able to view this valuable lecture which will have an impetus value on their academic and practice life so if you agree and if you allow then we wanted to upload this video in the uh, in the youtube channel of bisorathi live network and if you also agree then we will share the link of you so that you can also share amongst your uh, neighbor and uh, fellow colleagues students scholars and that will be help to us to get some sort of citation because i'm not getting you on my requirement on my demand every now and then but i think this valuable lecture we intend to upload so let me submit my humble proposal to you what's your opinion of course of course of course okay, i do it so, okay okay so we will upload it uh, my colleague dr jishnu please take care to upload this session uh, soon after the uh, session is over now my august audience let it be open for you you please raise your hands to have a congenial online board and my system admin will allow one by one to unmute you and to raise your voice or you can simultaneously post your questions through chat box we will take care or our respected speaker will take care from the chat box and to to answer so now it's open for the uh, online participants if you raise your hands then we will it will be easier to ask to give you open or make you unmute is there any question or any opinion so there is no ever ever come down down there i don't found any uh, rising hands so may i assume that after this nice and qualitative presentation we have no more question but i think our speaker is accessible approachable if anyone intend to contact with him please go through the bakura university web portal and the department then you will get his mail id drop a question seek suggestion then i think he will be kind enough to address because it's a very very vulnerable zone of our individual career institutional career nation career state career anything because we don't want to agree to welcome any bad news of any colleagues or any institution so to be safe from that i think professor subir kumar rai will be help us on this you know uh, plagiarism issues or infringement of copyright and ipr we will take our a uh, suggestion from his side to go ahead in our future course of uh, agenda i i said so without uh, losing much time let me now request my colleague dr kaushik ghosh who is supposed to be the in charge of my journal section as well as circulation unit of bisvarthi library to offer formal word of thanks to wind up the session so dr kaushik please Uh, thank you dr shah so i feel honored and privileged 
to get an opportunity to propose a word of thanks on this uh, such kind of five day national level academic skill development program between the 21st and 25th August 2023. As you know, this is the day two. So first on behalf of the Vishwabharati, Vishwabharati uh, Library Network as well as the Central Library, let me extend our gratitude and sincere thanks to our Honorable Vice Chancellor Sir, Professor Vidhu Chakraborty. Organizing such session throughout the year was only possible with his support. The program was only organized with the leadership of our respected university librarian, Dr. Nimai Chansaha. I also convey my hearty congratulations to you. So most importantly, my unique and hearty thanks to today's speaker, the, uh, Professor Shubir Rai. So for his such kind of uh, handy and uh, user-friendly speech on today's topic and uh, sir for his and for his consent and liberation too i thank all the distinguished uh, participants who have joined from different part of the country and abroad too to attend the session and i sincerely thank to the team ict of the central library for their expertise and again i thank everyone directly and indirectly involved of this event whose contribution has made the session a grand success thank you all again thanks for joining and have a nice day and before concluding i am now announcing the tomorrow session uh, as you know this is the five days on the special session so tomorrow there is another session on library services aligning with UN Sustainable Development Goals by Dr. Nija Singh, Librarian, TS Central State Library, Chandigarh, Punjab. May I request to the, all the participants, please join us tomorrow and rest of the day two. Thank you. Uh, the upload is now. Uh, Nimaida, please. Okay. So the, I think after this offering word of thanks, there is nothing to left to retire it. But uh, I request Professor Subir, your old town. Uh, I know that sometimes you have involved in a different institute of Bolpur area. So mm -hmm. no, whenever you come, don't forget to have a footstep at our library and to exaggerate our whole relation. And uh, <laughs> I think uh, whenever I will come before you for this kind of request, uh, you will be kind enough and rather you will be open access to of allow course. your hands of cooperation and uh, uh, with your of cooperation at least cooperation we will go ahead in our future course of academic journey nice so thank you very much meeting with you uh -huh. thank you okay thank Thanks you very much stay safe and safety okay. Okay. okay thank you so let us now wind up the online session